Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and on behalf of the SCAP South and Southwest Asia, as well as uh, CSAM, I would like to wel welcome you all uh, to this meeting on crop uh, residue management in South uh, Asia. We will have a very packed schedule, so I'm not going to take too much of your time, just a few simple uh, house rules to uh, maintain during the presentations. Uh, please make sure uh, for the presenters uh, to mute yourself at all times unless you are presenting. Uh, we have a packed uh, house, so uh, we set the default for our meeting on mute for everybody. So in case you want to make a comment or ask any questions, please uh, raise your hand or uh, mention it in the chat box so that our IT team uh, can unmute you. Uh, and please feel free to use the chat box in order to make your comments or uh, ask your questions. Uh, we are going to be monitoring the chat box uh, throughout the meeting. Um, now, uh, without further delay, I'm uh, happy to uh, give the Pico Tanaka, the director and head of uh, SCAP South and South uh, West Asia office, uh, to start the meeting with her opening remarks. Thanks, Leila. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for participating. It's a great pleasure to welcome you all. Uh, it's a hybrid meeting, um, and most of you are actually online. Um, this is a meeting on crop residue management in South Asia. We're also happy to take note, actually, that there were more than um, 260 people who registered to attend this event, um, representing governments, private sector, academia and think tanks, civil society, and international organizations. Although the context of the discussions today will be about South Asia, interest on this topic is shown by people from Southeast Asia, uh, Central and Northeast, uh, sorry, Central and Northeast Asia, uh, and Africa. This may be a reflection of the interest and relevance of this topic in other regions of the world and we are really delighted to have you all today. The burning of crop residues is a key environmental hazard in many of the South Asian countries, particularly in the indo region, which cuts across Northern and Eastern India, Pakistan, Nepal, and Bangladesh. This fertile plain is a densely populated area and has been a food bowl for many centuries. In the coming weeks, when the harvesting of crops is completed, the burning of crop residues will begin, where farmers burn their fields to make way for the next crop. Plumes of toxic smoke is created that increases the concentration of particulate matter and black carbon in the air. This poses a serious health threat to rural and urban populations and increases the risk of respiratory diseases such as asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, as well as cardiopulmonary disorders and lung cancer. The International Food and Policy Research Institute carried out a study in India, which found that agricultural crop residue burning exposes the general population to a threefold risk of acute respiratory infection and leads to over 300 million US dollars losses in economic value every year. The burning of crop residues is also harmful to subsequent agricultural production as the burning depletes soil of its organic matter, nutrients and microorganisms, and thus making the land less fertile. This can subsequently impact the monetary cost involved in recovering soil fertility through increased use of fertilizers. The burning of crop residues also emits greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, which contributes to global warming and climate change. For example, Pakistan is currently witnessing the devastating effects of climate change unfolding right before our eyes. Over the past months, Pakistan has experienced multiple heat waves and drought-like conditions that harden soils. This was followed by an early monsoon and unprecedented rains, 
which has resulted in the disastrous flooding that has affected 33 million people across 2 million acres of the country. There are about half a million persons in relief camps, as well as informal settlements of displaced people and families camped out in unhygienic conditions along roads with constant near misses by cars and trucks. Standing crops are also being damaged and fodder availability is also a concern with reports of livestock getting sick. Pakistan is an example of an extreme gravity, but we will find different combinations of similar issues in almost every country. Residue burning therefore adversely affects the achievement of several sustainable development goals. It contributes to climate change, which is SDG 13, affects our health and well-being, SDG 3, has implications on food security, SDG 2, and affects air quality of city inhabitants, SDG 11. In light of the multifaceted nature of crop residue burning, SCAP sub-regional office for South and Southwest Asia and the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Mechanization based in Beijing, China, have joined hands to undertake national studies in Bangladesh, India, Nepal, and Pakistan to better understand the situation of crop residue management in these countries, collect good practices and technologies of straw management, and propose action plans for interventions. A sub-regional report is also being developed to explore key actions and possibility of having a sub-regional framework to promote the sustainable and integrated management of crop residues. I hope that this meeting can provide a good platform for sharing of experiences of various countries, provide information on productive uses of straw that provide economic and environmental benefits, and collect expert opinions on this proposed action plan and possibilities for sub-regional cooperation to address the issue of crop residue burning. Any practical actions that we can take to reduce the residue burning will help to improve the economic, social, and environmental problems that this issue presents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mikiko. Uh, next, allow me to invite Ms. Yutang Lee, the head of CSAM, to share her opening remark. Thank you. Uh, uh, distinguished participants, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to today's uh, meeting at the Wansing Sub-Regional Corporation for Sustainable Climate Smart Integrated the Management of crop residues on behalf of CSAM, Center for Sustainable Agriculture Organization of UNASCAP, based in Beijing, along with uh, Ms. Michiko uh, Nataka and other colleagues from the ASCAP sub-regional office for South and Southwest Asia. Uh, as Michiko, uh, Michiko just mentioned that burning of crop residues is a common concern in many parts of Asia and the Pacific, including in South Asia. Uh, in recent times, this practice has drawn the attention of policy makers and the public due to the adverse efforts of the burning on environment, including air pollution, which impacts the lives of millions of people across countries and contributes to climate change. Uh, it is a, a major impediment to progress towards sustainable development goals. Uh, why many farmers still choose this? method despite the fact that it severely undermines uh, soil uh, fertility in long run. Um, research suggests that among the main reasons are the high cost of straw collection, transportation and storage, partially caused by the uh, shortage of euro labor, a tight seeding schedule for the next cropping cycle and the lack of uh, adequate methods to treat crop residue. In order to address residue burning, various approaches are being applied, although in uh, fragmented ways across different countries to utilize straw as fertilizer, fodder, and other purposes. However, one of the main constraints to improve and synthesize these approaches is a lack of suitable agricultural machinery and equipment. The, this is a need to test and promote integrated models of <laughs> utilizing straw with a focus on enhancing the performance of relevant machinery in, in specific local contexts. In this, 
particular attention is required for the needs of resource poor smallholder farmers who often suffer mm -hmm. from use of outdated or inefficient farm machinery and equipment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, CSAM is a regional institution of United Nations ASCAP, and we have been assisting member states in implementing sustainable agriculture mechanization solutions, including for sustainable and integrated management of crop residue. R regional and sub-regional cooperation, which is the core of CSAM's work, is vital to addressing the problem of residue burning for a number of reasons. For instance, air pollution caused by residue burning often acquires a transboundary dimension and thus requires solutions that transcend borders. Moreover, areas with similar eco, um, agroecological characteristics in the subregion can also benefit from common solutions and good practices, which implies that ongoing exchange of solutions and experiences is important. Uh, I would like to highlight that CSAM has been promoting a regional and sub-regional cooperation for integrated management of straw residue for several years. Initially launched in 2018 in China and Vietnam, CSAM's regional in in initiative seeks to identify, test and promote an integrated model to utilize straw as a fertilizer for the base material and the clean energy production in a circular manner. Uh, building upon its success and positive results and the leverage in the South and Triangular Cooperation modality, the regional institution, uh, the, the regional initiatives is now being expanded to Cambodia and Nepal, as well as Indo Indonesia. With funding support from China ASCAP Cooperation Program, I'm very pleased to mention that in March 2022, CSAM's Regional Institution on Mechanization Solutions for Integrated Management of Straw Residue in Asia and Pacific was cited among 80 global good practices in South and South Triangular Cooperation by the United Nations Office for South South Cooperation and other partners. We are delighted to have joined hands with ASCAP Sub Regional Office for South South West uh, and Southwest Asia to carry forward these efforts and promote uh, solutions for sustainable crop residue management through an analytical studies and the knowledge exchange. So I can see a lot of friends of a system network here. So I really wish today's meeting uh, all success and have fruitful discussion and deliberations and outcomes. I thank you. Thank you both for uh, this wonderful start and the important uh, points that you shared. Uh, at this time, uh, let's move to the first session, which is the presentation of the four national studies on this topic, Mr. Takashi. Taka Hatake uh, is going to be moderating this session. Takashi, please. Uh, thank you very much, Leila. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome everybody uh, from, from around the world uh, who are participating today. Um, yeah, so we've, we've in, in collaboration with CSAM, uh, we've, uh, we've uh, carried out studies in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, and Nepal. And we have with us uh, uh, the, the, the presenters who will present just some of the main findings and recommendations uh, from each of these studies. Uh, we have a limited time, so each uh, presentation will be limited to seven minutes. And uh, when we reach the sort of one minute mark that's left in the presentation, I, I, I may uh, chime in just to uh, warn uh, of, of the time limitation. Uh, so without uh, further ado, um, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Hossein, if you could uh, 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 present on the study that has been taking place in uh, Bangladesh. So, thank you, Tagashi. Um, yes, we see well. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, distinguished uh, participants, 
welcome all of you my presentations integrated astro management in uh, bangladesh uh, so crop residue uh, burning in bangladesh status if we can describe traditionally the farmer knows that incorporating crop residue is good for the soil and uh, we are lucky that open field burning of uh, rice residue is not widely practiced in bangladesh because uh, most of the part is cut uh, manually and carried to the home. He had a nearby plot for threshing. Recently, Bangladesh uh, mechanization started in positive uh, nature. So few farmers are considering the options of extra burning with the increased use of combine harvester. But farmers choose to burn long time some extra uh, that is in uh, lowland area rice residue they consider for um, burning, such like bad quality uh, rice with straw, dry maize residues, uh, which cannot be used uh, as uh, animal feed. So in uh, most of the residue part is rice is the um, main uh, contribution of residue. Total grain productions in Bangladesh 47.2 million tons. And uh, <clears throat> just uh, last year, as we estimated that 73.36 million ton of residue produced. So in Bangladesh scenario, though it is a densely country, but labor shortage in the real agriculture field. It's uh, one of the statistics we found that uh, 2002 <coughs> labor engagement uh, 51.7, now it is in decreasing 41.7, 2007, but recently it is about 38% labor engagement in Bangladesh. Example of the best practice in uh, Bangladesh is uh, rice residue. It is interesting that uh, <coughs> rice extra is a preferable fit for cows and buffalo, but wheat extra is not fit to cow and buffalo in Bangladesh. And soft uh, grain uh, <coughs> corn extra is used a uh, good fit for animals. Uh, remaining extra after harvesting is directly incorporated into the soil by uh, flowering. Unused straw from cow shed is dumped in a flesh uh, and used as a fertilizer. A small uh, <clears throat> older farmer and low income families used straws for outdoor uh, eating, but maize straw is used uh, domestic fuel purpose. Cow dung with uh, wet rice straw is used in biogas plant. Rice and wheat extra are used as a mulch for fruits and uh, vegetable productions. But um, recommendation as uh, our study we conducted, and we found that the facilitated purchases of extra velar, extra and corn extra software through subsidies provided in current farm mechanization project and updating of agriculture mechanization. Because in Bangladesh, <clears throat> Mm, custom hair services of machinery is very popular, being um, popular, and farmer accept this uh, model. So provide agriculture input support to farmer who follow sustainable extra management practices that could be the good option, uh, <clears throat> and uh, place uh, restriction from through policy and that limit loan facility, limit grant supply to government purchase higher rate of irrigation, lower government seed support. That could be the uh, good uh, initiative for extra uh, burning um, cases. That those farmers who violate this rule, they can be uh, lose these facilities. So support entrepreneurs to make biosar from extra, extra based materials for mushroom production and fancy extra crafts. That would be a good options also. And the last the promotional campaign as uh, still most of the farmers and agriculture concern are not uh, ever mass about extra burning. So it is the campaign need harmful effect of extra burning and social benefit of alternate use of extra. In uh, recommended uh, follow up actions, if we consider that Bangladesh uh, agriculture and ministerial, there is a existing agriculture advisory panel they can uh, identify different extra management intervention, form a work plan and follow up implementation with an efficient interministerial 
National Tax Force. And from other experience, we found that Tax Force Committee work well for different uh, problem solving issue. So that Tax Force can be a good option for extra management policy. So National Tax Force Committee can do regular, regularly monitor prof extra management practices, conduct regular meeting to discuss on the status of prof extra management, gaps and work plan and identify <coughs> prostic measures, prepare and distributed fact sheet leaflet to concerned agriculture department. And also BRC, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Council is the affects body in uh, Bangladesh. So they can organize annual uh, multi-stakeholder prof estro management workshop and broadcast key messages with agriculture community through mass media. In Bangladesh, mass media, especially electric media is very popular. So recommendations relevant for other countries from our experience in Bangladesh, um, they can be follow that promote appropriate conservation agriculture machinery. Uh, such as strip till planter, zero till planter, which can also work <coughs> through moderate level of prop residue. Introduce extra velar, extra suffer for extra management. A strategy for installing more number of biogas plant in the rural areas using the surplus amount of prop extra. Uh, Soaking rice with extra and mixing in a proper ratio for waste materials of mushroom cultivation. Promote custom hair service model of machinery for shafting farmers. Actually, this is a good option in Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh mechanization in progressing through these systems, farmers are getting uh, advantage. As uh, combined harvester is the example now in uh, Bangladesh. So thank you uh, all of you to my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Hossein, and thank you very much for presenting everything in the, in the allocated time. Um, uh, we will move through all of the questions, have a sort of a gen general uh, question and answer session uh, at the very end. Okay. If you need to sort of, if there are uh, questions, uh, please uh, feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand uh, during the question and answer session. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to move next to uh, India. We have uh, Dr. Uh, Mehta, who uh, is uh, the director of ICAR, the Central Institute of Agriculture Engineering. Dr. Mehta, I give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Takashi San. Good afternoon to everyone. So first of all, I thank CSM Sub-Regional Center for providing us an opportunity to conduct a study in the India as well as in sub-region. So I will be presenting the findings of the study in India. So as you can see in this slide that around 683 million ton of crop residue is generated in India and if we see the share of contribution, then rice is contributing around 33%, wheat 21%, sugar 17%, cotton 10%. And if we, out of that, 178 million ton is surplus. And out of that, around 140 million ton is burnt in our country. And 50% of that is burnt in three states, Punjab, Haryana, and Uttar Pradesh, particularly in the Indo-Gangetic Plain. And if we see the contribution of major crops uh, residue, which are burnt, 40% come from, come from the paddy straw, 22% from the wheat straw, and 20% from sugarcane straw. And, and a few regions which are important for crop residue burning in our country are, one is very short term interval available for sowing of next crop, particularly after harvesting of rice, wheat is being shown, and time available is very less. Another is, labor scarcity and high cost of collection, transportation and storage of extra, as well as paddy extra is not preferred as animal feed in our country. If we talk about the best practices of institute management of crop residue in India, 
the government of india has launched a scheme on promotion of agriculture mechanization and machinery for institute management of crop residue in the states of punjab haryana uttar pradesh and ncit of delhi from 2018-19 with an outlay of 24.52 billion indian rupees and in that uh, number of machinery have been promoted for crop residue management and 80% subsidy was provided for establishment of farm machinery bank or custom mining centers. In addition to that, 50% subsidy was provided for individual ownership of crop residue management machinery, as well as efforts have been made to create awareness on issue to crop residue management among farmers. Some of the important machinery which have been promoted through this scheme are paddy straw chopper come spreader, Super SMS attached to combined harvester, happy seeder, super SMS, and 0.213 million equipment and machinery have been sold under this scheme, and 39,391 custom hiring centers of institute management machinery have been established in these states. If we want to go through the benefits of the implementation of in is in this scheme in particularly if we see the benefit particularly in the state of Punjab then we can observe that prairie straw which was burned around 84 percent in 2007 17 declined to 37 percent in 2019 in addition to due to that that even air quality has also improved from poor to moderate and soil organic carbon has increased from 0.42 percent to 0.65 percent due to surface retention of paddy straw. If we talk about the best practices of ex situ management, some of these are also being implemented in our country. One is that that government has a plan to use five to ten percent blending of pellets with the coal for particularly for our power generation in thermal power plants. And in India, around 6,000 megawatt of biomass-based power plants have also been established. Right now, government is also putting a putting lot of focus on ethanol production from crop residue, and government has a target of ethanol blending in gasoline to be increased from presently from 10% to 20% by 2025. And recently, government has launched the 30 million liter of ethanol plant uh, using two, 200 thousand ton per annum of paddy straw and government has planned to install 12 such ethanol plants in our country in addition to that government is also putting a lot of focus particularly for establishment of biogas or bio cng production plant at community level if we talk about the major recommendations to address the crop residue burning age in india because presently most of the machinery which are used for crop residue management, those they require higher horsepower tractor as well as there are some problems of working of those machinery in moist straw condition. So there is need to improve those machinery. Another is we have to make more efforts for promotion of conservation agriculture machinery through financial incentives and customizing centers. And we have to cover come out with the crop residue management policy for each state, defining the various competing usage of crop straw produce in that particular states. And in-situ management of crop residue scheme has to be supplemented with ex-situ management techniques. And in, if we talk about the other interventions, then we crop residue is also used for animal bedding, fodder as a composting as, or mushroom cultivation, but they are usage for ex situ management practices are limited. And we have to put more focus on use of like biomass pellets from crop residue as a fuel substitution in thermal powers. And recently under ex situ management, we have identified that we, if we go for compressed biogas from paddy straw, then that is also good option for as ex situ management. And we have to also incentivize the power generation from biomass because the cost of power generation from a solar based power plant is cheaper as compared to power generation from biomass based power plants. And we also need to promote the 2G ethanol plants in public private ship partnership mode. So, in the end, major recommendations which can be applied in the sub region are that we have to give more focus on institute management of crop residue 
is on the right hand side you can see one picture that uh, combine harvester with super and sms is followed by happy cedars so that is the institute management practice that is environmentally sustainable financially sustainable as well as that also helps in enhancing the soil health and ultimately it leads to the enhancement in productivity of products and in-situ management need to be supplemented by some extra to techniques like biogas production from paddy stride domestic or community level pellets from crop residue as a fuel substitution in thermal power plants and power generation from crop residue that need to be incentivized so this is all in brief about the presentation of country report from india all right. Th thank you very much, Dr. Mehta. Uh, very interesting presentation and some, some very concrete recommendations in terms of things that can be done. Um, I'd like to move to the next presentation uh, from Nepal. Mr. Basnyat, I give the floor over to you. All right, perfect. We see your stream. Please go ahead. Mr. Vasanta, I think you need to unmute, please. Yeah, yeah. Now it's... Uh, yes, please go ahead. Yeah. The crop residue burning in Nepal is... Uh, well, the, basically, when the combined harvester came into the practice, the uh, open crop residue burning has increased. So the main reason for crop residue burning is... Uh, uh, the farmers are unaware of ne negative effect of burning. And uh, as Dr. Mehta told, it's a very short turnaround time between the crop, between uh, cro rice harvesting and the wheat. And the major problem is labor migration is creating problem. And then collecting the straw is labor intensive and it's, it's costlier and it's time and money. Uh, if you burn, it's saving time and money. That's why the farmers are more towards uh, crop residue burning. So uh, changing livestock rearing is another, another reason why the crop uh, residue has been burning, the commercial uh, rearing of livestock and alternate fuel uh, feed for the livestock is another, uh, another reason why the crop residue has been burned. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, as the combined harvester intervent, uh, intervention for crop harvesting has increased, the, the straw burning, the open straw burning is also increased simultaneously. So 54% of uh, the, the farmers who are using combined harvester are more likely to burn their long stubbles in the field. And then another reason for crop uh, residue burning is low market value of crop residue. Now, since there is no another, uh, so many alternate use of straw, so it's uh, another reason for crop burning. So access to uh, suitable uh, uh, technique of integrated straw management in in situ as well as exterior management is another reason for crop residue burning. So uh, best practices in Nepal for uh, the crop management is straw used as fertilizer by direct returning to the soil and in, in, in situ management. And uh, it's in two type and soil cover with straw using happy or super cedar, duratil, seed come fertilizer drill, another is incorporating into the soil, a rotary tiller, power tiller, seed come fertilizer drill, rotary mulch plus plowing, direct, direct plowing by moldboard plow. So in case of in exit to straw management, straw and hay baler and straw reapers are used to collect the straw from the field and stored in the uh, storage for later use as a uh, fodder. 
and uh, straw used as a fertilizer by uh, by composting and the compost peat, and it, it is used as a fertilizer. And then uh, it is used as a base material for mushroom cultivation, cooking and heating fuel, bedding material for uh, domesticated animal. And another is used, uh, uh, more volume is used as fodder for chopped and, uh, uh, and then treated with uh, urea and making of straw blocks, uh, another, another exit to straw use. And another is straw craft production uh, for handicraft and cottage industries is another exit to straw management um, practices in the past. So uh, uh, going through the report and then interviewing the key, key stakeholders and all, and then uh, I have suggested three type of uh, action plan for no bond campaign to stop crop, crop, uh, crop residue open burning. So it has been categorized in three, the short term to be completed in five years. The, uh, we don't have that much uh, baseline uh, data of straw. That's why baseline survey to be conducted, status, ability, and utilization of straw. And then uh, now we have gone to the federal federal system and then, uh, and then we need to advocate policy, policy makers, the importance of straw management and conservation of uh, CROB. The knowledge transfer in various straw management technique is lacking. So we need to do uh, demonstration of straw management, management machines, technique and all. And then another main problem of living long struggle in the field is the area harvest is the area, uh, the service charge has been taken in, on the area basis. So the, the, the combined harvester operator, they leave long struggles in the field, try to harvest the, uh, the land in very short time. So it uh, by changing uh, this uh, service uh, uh, charges from area basis to time basis can uh, somewhat reduce the, uh, the crop over, uh, crop burning in the field. And we should uh, pilot best practices of in-situ and extra to store management and replicate learning and provide incentive for not burning. Uh, this is another, another one of the major uh, uh, action plan to be taken. And then another thing is that the, the, uh, the country is preparing feed and fodder policy. And then it has uh, pro uh, proposed to have a crop residue utilization uh, uh, yeah, in that policy to be addressed. And then force uh, uh, requirement of importing straw management uh, machines along with the combined harvester. So in middle, middle term uh, to be completed by a, a eight years period and validate and adopt the best practices from the neighboring country and develop and implement training demonstration showcase of different ex situ and in situ management uh, techniques uh, to farmers, uh, to policymakers and all, and provide subsidy to for in, uh, integrated soil management techniques and machine, no direct subsidy to combined harvester, rise awareness of impact of crop residue open burning on human environment and soil health, promote conservation agriculture uh, uh, practices uh, as, as an in midterm uh, uh, action plan. In long term, it could go, go uh, uh, after, ten, uh, I mean, ongoing till the, the CROV is, is in a negligible uh, state. And then we should start no burn uh, campaign to stop uh, crop op uh, residue open burning and include integrated storm managers in the policy and strategy of federal and the provincial government. And another main important part, what I, what I want to, to, to have in this action plan is at least, I mean, plan that 75% of the crop residue are returned back to the field. That is a soil, uh, safe soil campaign uh, of, uh, at this present moment. So in the case of regional level cooperation, uh, what a kind of recommendation is start no bond campaign to stop crop residue open burning. This line uh, any service status of all the, the, the uh, in regional, uh, sub-regional level, validate and uh, adopt best practices, incentive for not burning, uh, use straw management machine along with combined harvester, and uh, subsidy for integrated straw management technology and machines, no direct subsidy for combined harvester, and promote conservation agriculture, and lastly, 
plant, 75% of crop residue are returned back to the field as a for, uh, to improve the soil health. So uh, that is uh, the main campaign at this moment. This is all my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Basnia, for, for, for your presentation. Um, indeed, I think you highlighted very nicely some of the different uh, ways of managing uh, crop residues in a fairly concrete plan in terms of certain actions that can be taken over various periods of time to address the issue within Nepal. Um, all right, uh, lastly, I'd like to move to uh, Pakistan. We have uh, Dr. Kalwar. Uh, Dr. Kalwar, are you there? Dr. Kalwar is an agricultural engineer and former director, chief scientific officer for the Doctor Research Council. Uh, Dr. Thank Kalwar. You, yes. Thank you, Takashi, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. So, are you able to share your screen? The presentation or yes, okay. Yes, it's a national study on integrated straw management in Pakistan. So crop residue burning in Pakistan. Total residue of five major crops, wheat, rice, maize, sugarcane, and cotton, produce more than 55 million tons every year. So this is a nearly 70 to 80 percent uh, uh, total residue. So about 80 percent of rice straw and sugarcane debris are burnt in the field. Less than five percent of wheat straw burnt in the field. And in case of wheat straw, only 5% burning and 95% consumed for animal feeding, paper production, export purposes, mushroom growing, and other local uses. Whereas maize straw burned less than 5%, that is mostly used for animal feed and mixed with soil. The cotton straw has alternative uses and burnt less than 1%. Main reasons for crop residue burning in Pakistan, especially in case of uh, rice and uh, sugarcane debris. So, uh, because no commercial value, time window between basmati rice variety, it's growing on uh, nearly one, 1.5 million hectare, and uh, wheat is less than 10 days. So, farmer has no choice to uh, uh, take away or some other uses, so it's easy for them to clear in the field, so they burn it. And another high cost of residue collection from field, other uses are very limited. Example of best practices in Pakistan, in case of rice straw use, cover ornamental plants during winter at public parks, temporary animal sheds during winter, covering seeds of spring floricultural plants, heating fuel in rural areas, fruit and industrial product packaging. In case of cotton stock, about 50% used as fuel in rural areas, the remaining 50% mulched in the soil using shredders or rotavators, it's a very common. Recently, big uh, cotton growers have started making pellets and briquettes from cotton stocks. So, uh, in July 2020, first time in Pakistan, the government of Punjab, Pakistan, launched a two years program to dis distribute 500 park of the heavy cedars and tractor operated straw choppers on 80% subsidy to the rice growers in specified districts. And uh, uh, all the uh, these 500 machines were sold uh, within half and, uh, one and a half years. So that uh, shows. Uh, 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 demand is there, but uh, if the government continues subsidy, then more machines will be uh, distributed. The government of Punjab, Pakistan also has implemented a law to import penalties on burning of crop residue to control burning. And we have a uh, little impact on uh, this uh, uh, process uh, because a lot of farmers uh, now, they are still burning, but at the night time now. Instead, at daytime, so just change 
changes, so still they have no alternate use, so they are still burning. So uh, national policy for integrated straw management. So at national level, Pakistan Agriculture Research Council, it's a uh, central level uh, body, ha has to organize national workshop on crop straw management every year to invite uh, residue management uh, stakeholders to advise federal and provincial governments about crop residue management strategies. And uh, it's possible for PRC to arrange uh, such kind of uh, um, workshops. Allow duty free import of crop head feeding combines. Uh, uh, we have uh, more than uh, 10,000 uh, Western combines, and only uh, less than 2,000 among them is uh, head feeding combines. So, head feeding, in case of head feeding combines, so most of the farmer take away all the straw because it is in a whole plant. So they use for uh, animal feeding as well as for other purposes. So we are here to emphasize that uh, to allow import uh, duty free uh, instead of uh, uh, Western combined. Formulate and implement appropriate laws and legislative policy to measure control burning of crop residue. So at the uh, provincial level, there is a, some policy, but it needs to control at whole, whole country level. In case of provincial level, expand the subsidy of park, happy center, and rice straw chopper uh, uh, for five years to increase the number of machines up to 5,000 each to cover uh, whole area, same at the ratio of 80%. At present, they have started another project for five years, but uh, it's on 50% uh, subsidy. So there are um, 200 machines uh, has been sold, uh, but they have uh, some limitations, uh, uh, some uh, target in a um, specific area. So that uh, we are discussing, uh, talking with uh, the government to uh, move some uh, restrictions in case of these two machines. So encourage all stakeholders in increasing awareness and arrange traveling seminars to progressive farmers who have fully adopted park seeder technology. Provide incentives to farmers who use track type head feeding combined harvester in case of this uh, uh, basmati rice. So uh, also we are suggesting uh, the national government to give more incentives to the farmers uh, to if he is um, using or getting on rent this kind of combined. So enforce the attachment of straw spreading. It's a a uh, two horsepower uh, uh, spreading kit developed locally uh, instead of uh, imported that require 25 horsepower. So we have uh, these reconditioned combines. Most of the uh, uh, rental companies remove that uh, straw making system. So uh, on, on that replacement, we are uh, asking them to enforce this uh, small kit already used in India. So for the continue to policy, promote diversified use of crop residue, rice straw and sugar can trash for power generation, bioethanol production, packaging material for fruit, vegetables and glassware, paperboard, panel industry, biogas and mushroom cultivation. Also, uh, we are suggesting expand subsidy scheme to include more machines, so that is a straw spreading kit, tractor PTO driven disc for these areas. Organize, um, because this uh, small residue uh, can be uh, incorporated with this, this flow very easily. Organize training of farmers for creating awareness about effects of crop burning, residue burning, and adoption of conservation, agricultural practices, and resource conservation technology. So recommendation at sub-regional level, mm. Uh, we request to expand and uh, scale uh, led pro uh, pilot project already implemented in some countries to straw management, including Pakistan, by uh, through uh, Agriculture Engineering Institute at PRC Islamabad and the uh, government Punjab's uh, Directorate of General Agriculture Fields. And other, uh, you know, other uses of straw 
um, I have um, practically, practically seen in China, they were using uh, uh, machinery to develop for straw mesh and row making at large scale. So I would request uh, to launch a such joint project uh, for these four countries, uh, either to develop or to uh, arrange some machines to initiate a new project. I'm sure it's uh, uh, these products can be easily adopted and uh, it's a very big demand in the, the country, both all countries. So thank you. All right, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, for, for for your presentation. Um, we're a little bit over time, but uh, maybe just uh, we have some uh, comments that have come in the chat. And basically, to sort of summarize, what we've seen from from some of the commonalities that we've seen from these studies is that the the, the burning of the crop residues. I mean, there are a number of reasons why sort of it happens. Uh, one of the things that came out in many of the studies we see is the short turnaround of time between the harvesting of crops and the planting of the next crop, crops and uh, you know, the, the difficulty in being able to to uh, clear away the straw in sufficient way in a sufficient time. Um, the use of combine harvesters as well uh, uh, has also seen uh, also a growth in the burning of straw and it seems as though there use of the combine harvesters, but also the straw management machinery is also sort of needed as a sort of an entire package in order to better reduce the, the level of straw that is that, it, that, that we see in the fields. Um, there is a, the issue of labor scarcity also also came up, although we have the mechanization, we're also facing more labor scarcity within the within the rural areas and this also can raise make it more difficult for to be able to collect the straw in a, in a fast and efficient way. Um, and there's an issue of uh, lack of awareness, I guess, also of the, the, the consequences of and the, and the problems associated with uh, crop residue burning, as well as alternative technologies and ways that uh, that, uh, that that the straw can be used. Um, in terms of action plans, we do see that sort of awareness raising, awareness raising training, not only on the, the problems, but also on the different solutions uh, that are there. Um, uh, are also needed, and I uh, think the promotion of conservation agriculture was also seen as a as a possible way to to try to help um, uh, mitigate uh, the issues that this raises. Um, this is a very sort of brief sort of synopsis. I haven't really done justice to everything that has been said. Uh, just a couple of points. So uh, there was one sort of quest line of questioning. Um, uh, for Bangladesh was seen as a bit of an unusual case whereby straw still has a high value as animal feed and sometimes worth more than the rice harvest itself. Um, so it's often frequently sold uh, rather than tilled or, or into, the, into the soil or burn. However, there's a bit of a yellow flag that is raised uh, in that as the agriculture economy advances and begins to mechanize more, straw may have less, will have and so the rate of burning may, may very well accelerate. Um, I, I don't know uh, uh, whether Dr. Hossein, you have any sort of thoughts on that comment, general comment that was made. Actually in Bangladesh, um, through farm mechanization project, uh, government initiative to expand, especially combine harvester and rice transplanter. These two machine is priority based expand in the farmers field. So, uh, custom hire system is very popular in the But though labor shortage is in the field, so farmers are very interested to use combine harvester. As combine harvester is expanding, some cases we found that the extra remaining in the field. So farmers are facing difficulties collecting those uh, extra. So it's a beginning uh, problem. So as uh, Mr. Sabir Gala in Pakistan mentioned that head fit combine harvester and real fit combine harvester. So that uh, head fit combine is comparatively costly. 
Um, but in a real feed, combine harvester comparatively cheaper, but 50%, more than 50% is still remaining in the field. So um, that case uh, should be considered through policy um, uh, next on uh, how we can uh, manage um, stro in the coming days. So as well as a mechanization needed, but side by side, estro management policy should be in advance. Uh, so consider priority base. Still, though it is not a uh, open field burning in Bangladesh, uh, uh, not but expected next uh, near future farmer may start burning. So it is a uh, timely. I can say it is a timely uh, concern to the agriculture um, administrative personnel to take uh, right uh, decision. So I can uh, suggest a request system. In Bangladesh case, policy planner is not still much concerned about this extra burning. So if policy planner, related policy planner, ministerial personnel, they can convince so it can be take uh, right uh, decision right now. So this is my suggestions, uh, um, but uh, um, in Bangladesh, though it is a densely populated country, but mechanization is in advancing, advancing. Um, so, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dr. Hossein. And there was actually a, a, a comment that has been put in uh, from the Nepal Agriculture Research Council, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Ja, whereby the policy intervention is key to sort this, uh, this crop residue burning, and that we should try to see some coherence between our agricultural strategies. And I think within that, this issue of uh, uh, straw management should be considered really well, uh, well in, in the agriculture policies that we have in the country, in the countries. Um, sorry, we're a little bit over time, so I would like to close the initial session here, but I'd like to thank all of the presenters for, for your presentations. And I hand the floor over to you, Thank, thank you. you. First of all, I want to thank all of the experts for their work in the past months preparing and for presenting the highlights today. Uh, let's move to the next uh, session, which is the panel discussion on buildings of cooperation and areas of cooperation. Uh, Mr. Anshuman Warma is going to be the moderator for this session. Uh, Anshuman, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Leela, uh, and a very, uh, uh, a very good morning, good afternoon, Good evening, depending on which part uh, of, of the of, of the region you're joining from, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's it's a pleasure uh, to have this uh, opportunity uh, to uh, to moderate uh, this panel discussion, uh, which is on the uh, 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 on on the theme of uh, uh, building a sub-region framework for cooperation and the uh, areas for cooperation. I think the presentation that have taken place have set a, a very um, uh, solid uh, backdrop for I think the, the discussions that uh, that can follow. Um, so let me just uh, outline that uh, the objective of this uh, discussion is really to explore the opportunities for uh, sub-regional cooperation uh, in the area of sustainable, uh, climate smart and integrated management of uh, crop residues. Uh, and uh, in particular, uh, we are going to discuss and invite comments and suggestions on a draft report uh, titled uh, Integrated Straw Management Regional Report for uh, Bangladesh, India, Nepal, and Pakistan. Uh, that will be presented at the start of the panel discussion. Uh, and uh, this report, uh, once uh, you know it's been finalized, uh, will be expected to propose the components uh, and a framework of sub-regional cooperation in South Asia for uh, promotion of integrated management of straw residues. Um, so that's the overall objective and the comments and suggestions that we receive uh, uh, through this uh, discussion from the panelists as well as from the audience uh, will be very important for us to further improve and, and to finalize this uh, report. So uh, uh, before we start, uh, I'd just like to inform that the overall time available for the panel discussion uh, was originally one hour, 15 minutes. We are a bit behind schedule and I mean, taking out the, the introduction part. Uh, we'll have about 15 minutes for the opening presentation on the sub-regional report. Uh, then we'll have a panel discussion for about 35 to 40 minutes, uh, depending on time availability. 
and then hopefully we'll have a bit of time to take a, a question from the audience and you know open up for uh, some questions from the floor uh, and I, I hopefully i can briefly summarize some of the key messages at the end so uh, let us now uh, begin uh, i would like to introduce uh, uh, once again our distinguished presenter uh, who is also the lead author of the uh, sub-regional report that's been developed uh, i'd like to invite uh, dr c r mehta uh, the director of the uh, Central Institute of Agricultural Engineering of uh, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR, uh, to please uh, uh, take the floor and present the uh, sub-regional report. Uh, Dr. Mehta, over to you. Thank you, Shumanji, and good afternoon to everyone, and good morning to a few. So, first of all, I thank CSM for providing opportunity to ICR to write the report on the sub-regional study of crop residue management in South Asia. So in this slide, you can see there is large variability in the estimates of biomass production, particularly for five major crops like rice, wheat, maize, sugarcane, and cotton. And in, in India, it is around 585 million ton from 101 million hectare area. In Pakistan, it is around 56 million ton from 16 milli, million hectare area. In Bangladesh, it is 74 million ton from 12 million hectare area. And in Nepal, it is around 11 million ton from 3 million hectare area. So it varies from 3 to around 6 ton per hectare. In this slide, you can see the crop wise residue generation in, in different countries. So if you see first in Bangladesh, 90% crop residue is of rice. And if you see in Nepal, it is 53%. In India, from rice, it is 39%, whereas in Pakistan, it is, it is 13% from rice. Whereas if we see contribution from wheat crop, then in Pakistan, it is 45%, whereas it is only around 2% in Bangladesh. In Nepal, it is around 20%. And in India, it is 25%. And the quantity of crop residue, different crop residue produced in different countries are also given in this pie chart. I'm not going into detail of that. And if we see the use of the different crop residue in different countries, so particularly the crop residues are being used as animal feed, bedding material for cattle, residue incorporation or residue mulching, then as a domestic fuel, as a production of different value-added items like mats, et cetera, compost making, compost making, paper production in all those, all the four countries, but their use as such for such purpose is limited. And that's why there is surplus and that is being burned in countries like in uh, India and Pakistan, crop residue is also used for power production from power generation plants, as well as the, in India, it is also being used for biogas production. Even it is also being used for biogas production in Bangladesh also. And if we want to know about the crop residue, which is burnt in the region, it depends upon number of the factors like crop cycle and type harvesting season also. It has already been highlighted by different presenters in previous session also and the potential use of residue and the profitability of alternate options because there are a number of options, but if the, those options are not profitable, then farmers may not go for adopting those such options. And if we see the crop residue burnt in different countries, so around 140 million ton, the crop residue is burnt in India and that is mainly of a rice crop then it is followed by wheat crop, particularly in some states, and then cotton and sugarcane crop residue are also burnt on limited scales. In Pakistan, 
the burning of crop residue estimates is not readily available, but it uh, particularly rice and sugarcane crop residue are burnt on a large scale. In Bangladesh, uh, it has already been mentioned that only a very less crop residue is burnt, only 0.22 million ton, and that is only of wheat and almond rice, particularly due to the introduction of combined harvester in Bangladesh. And in Nepal, also estimates of burning of crop residue is not available, but in Thrai Belt, rice crop residue is burnt by a few farmers, those who are using the combined harvesters. So main reason for burning of crop residue in the regions are one is that very short time is available for sowing of uh, wheat crop after harvesting of rice, particularly in the country of India, Pakistan, and Nepal. Another is the introduction of combined harvester, which harvest the crops at very high height, and that leaves long, long straw in the fields. And in also one of the reason is that uh, lack of availability of, of straw management machinery in sufficient quantity in those country. That's why farmers find that uh, burning of the crop residue is easiest and cheaper options for disposal of crop residue. As well as the, there are options for executive management of crop residue, but the cost of collection and transportation is also high as well as there is shortage of labor availability. As in addition to that, the, there is poor uh, awareness about the use of crop residue machinery in different countries also. And if we see the consequence of the crop residue burning, so in India, we have observed that particularly 23 million tons of rice residue is burnt in Northwest India, and that results in loss of about 34 million ton of carbon dioxide equivalent and about 1.4 multiplied by 10 to the power five ton of nitrogen per annum. And in Pakistan also, World Head has, WHO has estimated that more than 60,000 people have died due to poor quality of air. In Bangladesh also, the emissions from the, due to burning of crop residue is increasing from 80, increasing, and they are expected to reach to 87 million ton in 2020 to 2030, and by 100 million ton by 2050. And in Nepal also, the emissions from crop residue burning are increasing at slow pace, but it has increased from 85 kiloton carbon dioxide equivalent in 1961 to, to 160 kiloton carbon dioxide equivalent in 2018. And this particularly the air, air pollution from straw burning is not a country specific problem, but it is a cross border or transboundary issue and that also highlights the need for sub-regional cooperation, particularly the areas where there is burning of the crop residue in these countries. If we talk about the best practices for crop residue management, then it has already been highlighted that is in-situ management of crop residue using the CRM machinery is one of the best options with the residue mulching. And in that we can go for use of zero till deal, happy cedar machine, super cedar, even a strip till deal also. And in that it is recommended that if we go for combine the super SMS and then it, it is followed by these machinery, then it will be more helpful. For some crops, farmers may go for a residue incorporation with the use of paddy chopper come spreader or a use of MB plow or disc plow or even rotary tiller also, but that requires a lot of energy. And if we go for institute method of straw management that helps in not only saving of nitrogen, potassium, and irrigation water, but it also helps in enhancing the soil or carbon, and ultimately it, it leads to the enhancement in productivity of the soil in the regions. So in this slide, we have shown that uh, in situ different options of in situ management of crop residue, which are being followed in different countries. In India, we have we have uh, implemented one scheme on in situ management of crop residue, particularly in northern parts of uh, India. In some other states, also <coughs> such practices being used. And in that uh, mulcher, happy cedar, zero till super cedars are being promoted. 
in pakistan also it had been mentioned that uh, they are also promoting park cedar or even extra management uh, cedar extra management system with the combine and they have implemented that scheme from 2021 onwards but in that limited machines have been supplied so far in nepal also particularly in tarai belt a few farmers have started using the extra management machinery like zero till deal even happy cedar also but those are being imported in nepal in bangladesh also power tiller operated is uh, strip till deal zero till plant have been developed and are being promoted through cement and other programs <coughs> in situ management has to be supported with ex situ management and for ex situ management also star reaper is being used particularly in the country like india pakistan and nepal particularly for collection of the straw of wheat <coughs> then sorry straw rake and straw balers are also being used for collection of straw of rice and then those straw are being fed to animals animal feed in countries of the region some ex situ management practices are also being used particularly the biogas is also being produced from paddy straw and that is being produced on a limited scale even biomass residue is also used in power power plant particularly rice husk and other in addition to that in india pellets from the biomass are also used in thermal power plant power plants particularly to supplement the coal and briquettes which have been produced from the crop residue can also be used for thermal applications in industries also and crop residue is also being used for composting but the use of crop residue through different ex situ management is limited and that leads to the burning of the crop residue so we have to give more focus on in situ management of crop residue so crop now i come to the common challenges and gaps particularly in this region and i may not read each one but i may highlight only a few important ones in which uh, we can focus more focus particularly if we talk about in situ management then or if we talk about the adoption of conservation ag agriculture that is limited in the region and that uh, highlights the need for adoption of such practices then that will help in even enhancing the soil health also another is the uh, challenge is the use of the combined harvester and right now those are harvesting at higher level higher height also and that leads to long crop residue in the fields and that that is being burnt so in that also in it is recommended that some uh, policy intervention is also required and there is need to create awareness among the farmers about the negative attitude or perception about the leaving of the crop residue as a mulch in the field and if we talk about the ex situ management those practices are available techniques are available but the cost of the collection transportation and storage of residue for their subsequent use is high and that uh, restricts the use of the crop residue as a ex situ management and if we have uh such options available in nearby then such ex situ management can practices can also be promoted then if you talk about the some common issue then there are if we observe from the presentation of from different countries that we do not have proper information statistical information about the availability of crop residue their utilization in whether it is for fodder or whether it is for mushroom cultivation or whether it is for in situ management as a mulch or even very less information is available about the surplus extra management so that is required another there is lack of crop residue management policy in different countries right now farm mechanization policy is available for different country but there is need for crop residue management policy also in these countries and farmers are to be provided with uh, incentives for adoption of such practices then they will stop the burning of the crop residue so what is the way forward or options as i have already mentioned if uh, ex situ management options involves long distance transportation if technology is expensive or if it involves high 
capital investment, then it is less likely to succeed. So the best option recommended is that uh, we have to go for uh, in-situ management in that we have to feed the nutrients in the crop residue back into the soils. So if we talk about the mechanization interventions, then we have to promote the crop residue machinery, particularly through the conservation agriculture practices, and that will help in enhancing the soil health also. In addition to that, we have to make some minor modification in already available machinery to make them suitable for small tractors as well as for power tillers being used in the regions also. And we also need to enhance the access to conservation agriculture machinery at subsidized rate or through custom hiring centers by providing the subsidies also. And we also need to go for large scale demonstration training and workshop to create awareness about the benefit of the uh, straw management practices. And in that, if we talk about the institutional interventions, then we have to conduct a survey to collect information about the availability, utilization, and surplus star resources, particularly in the regions through systematic protocol. And there is need for crop residue management policy to rationalize the use of the crop residue available in different countries. As well as we have to also enforce appropriate legis legislation on prevention of burning through incentives as well as deterrence. Right now that is being done, but that is not implemented properly right now so far. If we talk about the socioeconomic interventions, then biogas can be produced from the crop residue and that can be done at even domestic level as well as community level. And that has also been demonstrated in some countries. Then we have to create the awareness about the negative effect of the burning of crop residue on the health as well as environment through media campaigns, etc. And we have to supplement the in-situ management practice with the ex-situ management, particularly if, they are, if we have the options of use of the crop residue as a ex-situ, whether it can be used as a compost, as a, as a feeder in power plants also. And if we want to use uh, crop residue in power plant, then we need to incentivize power generation from biomass-based power plants because the cost of power, power production from solar-based is cheaper as compared to biomass-based power plants. And even pellets which are produced from crop residue that can be supplemented uh, with coal, particularly for use in thermal power plants and bio CNG or bio Compressed biogas can, from paddy stock can also be promoted through community levels as well as we can promote the 2G based ethanol plants in public private partnerships. So, if we talk about the common framework for uh, sub regional corporations, then one option is that we have to conduct a systematic study on availability, utilization, surplus, and burning of crop residue in the South Asia. Another that we have to share the equipment and technologies for in-situ crop residue, which have been developed by different countries in the, in the region. We have to also share the best knowledge about the best practices of CRM in different countries through organizing workshop like this, as well as so one workshop was organized at Nepal also a few years by CSM. Another, there will be need for harmonization of testing standards for CRM machinery. Right now, testing standards for machinery like Happy Cedar or even Super SMS are being developed in some of the countries. And we have to also explore the policy for harmonization for adoption, adaptation of CRM machinery, particularly for the combines to be imported or exported from the countries. And they may be also be provided with SMS or super SMS seed uh, system. And in the end, I would like to say that there is need for a combination of technology with incentives for adoption of such technologies to reduce the crop residue burning in the regions. And farmers should also be sensitized, particularly about the economic value of the crop residue, whether it, it is addition of the nutrient in the soil or it can be used as a subsequent for different uh, quality product generations. 
And this is all in brief about the presentation of the sub-regional report of the region. Thank you very much, Dr. Mehta, for uh, your uh, presentation. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a very informative, uh, interesting presentation. I think gleaning out some of the commonalities across the different countries uh, that have been uh, studied. Uh, but I think it, it's laid a good backdrop uh, for the, the common issue of uh, crop residue burning. Uh, not just the extent of the problem, but you know, a bird's eye view of the best practices for the subregion, both in situ and ex situ, uh, the, the challenges and uh, you know the possible way forward uh, in terms of national action as well as uh, subregional cooperation. Uh, I think what what does come out is you know the 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 potential to have uh, local solutions for the local context of this problem that uh, that we see in in the region. Uh, so. Uh, uh, I think uh, with, with that, uh, let us uh, move on to the actual panel discussion. Uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to uh, introduce our uh, distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, we have uh, six of them uh, joining us for this panel discussion, and I would request them to switch on their cameras if they are not already switched on yet. So uh, firstly, from uh, Bangladesh, uh, we have uh, Dr. Sultan Ahmed. Uh, the former member director, uh, Natural Resource Management of the Bangladesh Agricultural uh, Research Council uh, and uh, a long-term uh, supporter and uh, uh, a friend of CSAM, I would say. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Rajbir Singh uh, from India. Uh, he is the director of the Agricultural Technology Application Research Institute uh, in, in Ludhiana. Uh, from Nepal, we are being joined by uh, Mr. Javed Alam, uh, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of uh, Agricultural Engineering, uh, Tribhuvan University, uh, Institute of Engineering, uh, Purvanchan Campus uh, in Dharan. Um, then from Pakistan, we are being joined by uh, Dr. Mohammad Azim Khan, uh, former Chairman of the Pakistan Agricultural Research Council, and uh, again, someone who, who knows uh, the CSAM very well. Uh, we are glad to be joined uh, all the way from Rome by uh, Dr. Sandra Corsi, uh, from the uh, headquarters of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Uh, she's the coordinator of projects on conservation agriculture and uh, climate smart uh, crop production intensification in the plant production and protection uh, division. Uh, and then finally, we are glad to uh, have uh, Ms. Juliana Albertengo, uh, coordinator for black carbon mitigation, uh, agricultural open burning, of the International Cryosphere uh, Climate Initiative, which is based in the US, but uh, with Ms. Ms. Juliana is joining us uh, from her base in, in Argentina. So uh, a very warm welcome to uh, all the panelists and uh, thank you once again for uh, taking time to, to join us uh, for this panel discussion. Uh, we are uh, you know, running a, a bit uh, tight on time. So uh, you know, before we start, I'd just like to request all the panelists to please be concise and to kindly limit uh, response to each of the questions to uh, within three minutes, uh, if you could. So with that, let us move to the, uh, the, the first question. Uh, I will uh, put the first question uh, to, to start with to Dr. Rajbir Singh from India, and then we'll also uh, take the views of uh, Mr. Javed Alam from Nepal and, and Dr. Sandra Corsi. So uh, the first question I'd like to pose is, uh, do you agree that there is a need for a sub-regional cooperation framework? Uh, for South Asia. We've seen the complexity of the problem that we face, uh, you know, the different uh, local contexts and challenges. So we'd really like to hear from you on, on the need for sub-regional cooperation. So first I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Rajbir Singh from India. Of course, we know there's a huge national project on straw management that has been undertaken in India. And perhaps you could also, uh, you know, share with us a bit of your experience uh, drawing on that project. So Dr. Rajbir, over to you. Thank you, Anshuman. I'm audible. Yes, please go ahead. At the outset, I'm, uh, I, I must appreciate the effort of uh, CSAM to organize this very important discussion cross countries in South Asia to manage the crop residue management. Yes, I agree that regional and sub regional cooperation is must to share experiences, success stories, and also deal with the problems, constraints, uh, bottlenecks which are facing uh, while the management. Dr. Rajbir, please unmute. Have you are muted. Un unmute. Say uh, that the, the most plan, uh, I mean, presented by Dr. Mehta, 
uh, for an integrated solution of including both in situ and ex situ uh, management. I think it's worthful. It seems very practical and it addresses the uh, problem holistically. Hope the thing will move faster with the, such type of collaboration. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Rajbir. Uh, so let me now bring in uh, uh, Professor Javed Alam uh, from, from Nepal. So, you know, I know uh, in, in Nepal, straw burning is, is an important issue in, in the Tarai area. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, as combined harvesters, in, their usage increases, you know, it's becoming a, a bigger problem. So we'd like to hear from you also about, uh, do you agree there's a need for sub-regional uh, cooperation framework to address this issue? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anshuman Verma, uh, for providing me the opportun this opportunity. Uh, yes, uh, I agree. Uh, that uh, there is a need for sub-regional cooperation to address this issue of uh, crop residue burning and its management. As uh, crop residue burning, uh, the effect of crop residue burning has no political boundaries and the emission uh, from crop residue burning uh, can move uh, anywhere uh, in the direction of wind. And uh, we can, uh, we just uh, hear uh, and uh, uh, that the Pakistan, uh, although only contributing 0.9% uh, global uh, greenhouse gas emission is one of the vulnerable countries to impact of climate change. So means uh, it has a global impact. Uh, obviously uh, our country also, according to a study, Nepal has world's highest age standardized death rates for uh, asthma problems or lungs diseases uh, caused by air pollution uh, uh, disease in uh, 2019. That is 182.5 per 100,000 population. So uh, these things uh, show that uh, we cannot struggle alone. We cannot uh, solve these problems uh, alone. And also uh, for our country context, uh, open border uh, for, uh, from India. So makes quick transfer of good as well as bad practices. So uh, seeing these things, uh, I think, uh, and I support that uh, there is a strong need of uh, this kind of uh, regional cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Amsman. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Alam. Uh, uh, and uh, again, I think very, very valid points that you've made. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, just uh, bring uh, on board uh, our next uh, contributor. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sandra Corsi from FAO. Uh, you know, FAO uh, has been promoting regional cooperation in the area of sustainable agriculture mechanization in other regions, uh, I think, including Africa. So, perhaps from your experience, you know, if you could comment on the need for sub regional cooperation framework for South Asia. Yes, thank you very much, Anshuman, for the question. And actually, I wanted to congratulate for the very interesting presentations, discussion, and the very well moderated uh, event. Um, yeah, burning the straw is a poverty problem and an environmental problem too, as we as we saw. And as such, it requires policy support. Um, and I would say it is a poverty problem because it is the least expensive method to dispose of of excessive residue when it hinders production for land preparation or nitrogen immobilization. Um, and it is a collective uh, environmental problem because the environment, as we said, is agnostic as to where pollution comes from and as who has caused it, even if it is smallholders who did not have alternatives. And it is a policy solution because policies are the glue to attract and bring together in a coherent way the technologies, the infrastructure, uh, the knowledge we need to provide farmers with feasible and uh, viable alternatives. In fact, we see the intensity of straw burning varying from country to country, not so much in relation to where it is banned. It is banned uh, in most countries. 
but generally in relation to the feasibility of alternative uses of straw, for example, uh, as illustrated in the presentation, less straw uh, is burned when it can be used as fodder for livestock or compost for crops or for other on-farm uh, uses. And where mechanization is introduced, replacing animal power, Burning straw may increase. Uh, we need technologies uh, that uh, help farmers uh, manage it better. So uh, back to the question. We do need a cooperation framework for residue management uh, among the countries that in the same region share the same issues because this will allow to co-develop the solutions, uh, facilitate knowledge sharing and uh, create business opportunities for the private sector, farmers are the private sector, which is important because sustainability is easier when uh, profitable and uh, market driven. And I would say that for the framework to be effective, uh, it would need to include public, private, civil society and cooperation for development uh, stakeholders. So this is my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Corsi. And uh, I think uh, very much uh, echoing the point that, uh, you know, the, the uh, sub-regional cooperation gives us the opportunity to find local solutions to this, you know, local problem and, and to co-develop solutions, as you very rightly said. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, with that, uh, now let's uh, move on to the second uh, question. Uh, 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 thanks to, to, I think, all, all the three previous speakers who outlined on the first one. So uh, I'd move on to the uh, second question. I'll, I'd like to, uh, you know, first put it to Dr. Muhammad uh, Azim Khan from Pakistan, but then also bring in Dr. Sultan Ahmad uh, from Bangladesh and uh, Ms. Juliana Adeltengo. So uh, Dr. Khan, uh, Looking at the action plan proposed in the sub-regional report that we just saw, uh, you know, there was outlining of the mechanization interventions, the institutional interventions, socioeconomic and other technical interventions. Uh, what issues do you feel are the most important to, to address uh, within this, this diverse set of issues that we see? And do you think, are there any areas or elements for cooperation that you feel are missing uh, in the proposed cooperation framework? Uh, Dr. Khan, if you could unmute, please. I think you're muted. Okay. I, it's okay yes. now. Yes. Uh, thank you, Alma, uh, for inviting me to answer this question. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> I must acknowledge that uh, I gone through this whole report, uh, regional report, and found it really very comprehensive. It has touched almost all uh, important aspect of uh, residue uh, mismanagement or residue management in the region, uh, in the whole region. Uh, a few things uh, that I, I feel that uh, that might have been emphasized. One is on uh, because in the whole region, except with few exception. Uh, the, uh, the productivity is almost stagnant from the last 10 to 20 years. Although in terms of total production, the production has increased, but in terms of yield, yield is stagnant. And the main reason is the, uh, uh, the enhanced cropping intensity. Uh, and then uh, the, the other, and there is low organic matter in the soil. If uh, there could have been some mention about organic matter or across the region, what is the current status in the different production systems or cropping pattern? That could have uh, also uh, really help us to emphasize more on uh, this uh, institute management, uh, like uh, uh, you see, conservation agriculture. So that that might can be considered if uh, data from secondary sources is available. So what was the level maybe 20 years back and over time it, because of cropping intensity, uh, crop residue burning. Uh, and then uh, uh, with, uh, with this background, what current level of, as far as Pakistan is concerned, I know it's less than 0.4% uh, organic matter and maybe similar situation will be others. And because of low organic matter, use of imports, uh, uh, chem uh, chemicals imports is, uh, has uh, also efficacy efficiency has been low. It has been approved in studies in, uh, done in India empirically. The second thing is, uh, although uh, 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 you see this, uh, uh, this surpluses uh, in the residues, the empirical data was only available from India, comprehensive data. 
from other region it has been estimated on crop harvest index uh, that need to be considered in our further work that must be uh, empirical like it has been done in india so uh, that that will uh, help to improve uh, this report as well and then calculation of uh, another thing although it has been generally mentioned about the driving factors that uh, drives farmers to go for burning but if uh, uh, if if we could pinpoint some on uh, on production system based factors like timeliness time conflicts and harvesting and then varietal uh, there are specific particularly uh, for those crops where the residue burning level is high for rice rice wheat system in in the whole region maybe few rotation we can focus and then specifically pinpoint that uh, in in a relation to varieties like uh, coarse agri uh, coarse varieties fine varieties then may be certain early maturing variety late maturing varieties if uh, that could be a little bit elaborate and more that will help further in 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 focusing our efforts for uh, the the framework that we mentioned in in the different regions uh, then documentation of best practices although it has been emphasized even in the recommendation in the framework but documentation of uh, the best practices uh, really uh, needed a little more a bit more emphasis as i can just quote in pakistan there is there is there are few farmers who are doing some novel thing like uh, if you see go to the uh, youtube you will find sultan methods so what he is doing actually he 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 has minus machinery used after rice uh, what what he is projecting and i have uh, visited his farm several time and collected some information data as empirical data i found he is right so these exception need to be considered his his practice is that uh, do just spread seed and fertilizer uh, uh, in standing rice crop and then go for uh, uh, you see combine whatever combine is available and then after that use mulcher and then irrigate and uh, there is 10 to 15% higher yield with this practice minus machinery and then he the rice he is using very novel thing he use mulcher uh, uh, after uh, after rice and then uh, uh, after wheat and then after wheat uh, he just use a, a drill for just puncturing the puncture the land then ask labor to just uh, sow in lines and then line to line distance everything and labor is also quite easy in implementing that so i yeah. think some exception practice either in nepal either in bangladesh that need little more more analysis more mention and and, and that that is a solution for high productivity uh, low cost of production uh, uh, residue management and there are others uh, one thing uh, i one area that i i, I just see that, that if you could just just conclude in 30 seconds please but we will we'll come back to it i'm concluding i'm yeah. concluding yes only these best practices where farmers are practices residue management are the fields where for, for more than 4 years i think that those fields need to be studied and finding must be shared at my, my, at what reduced level of inputs uh, farmer can get higher yield sustainable yield uh, soil structure uh, microorganism presence all these things aeration because this has quite in pakistan for pakistan evidence it is very clear that even this climate change factors even droughts even uh, high temperature even higher higher uh, you see uh, flooding type situation more rainfalls uh, the fields with the with the, with the residue management uh, conservative agriculture uh, the yield farmers get higher yield higher productivity possibly these kind of uh, exceptions are good practices practice across the region that need little more for for further promotion or for right anyway thank you this is, <laughs> thank you I thank you here uh, and then thank you. Thank you, Dr. Khan. No, I think all very valid points, and really, I think reiterating the the need for for more analysis, you know, more data, uh, in order to you know uh, base uh, uh, you know interventions and and policy act actions on, and also the need for for good practices. Uh, very valid points. Thank you. Uh, now, I, uh, move on uh, to uh, uh, Dr. Sultan Ahmed from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, uh, you know, as we've heard, soil burning is a is, is an emerging issue in Bangladesh. I mean, we see it on the horizon. but we don't want it to come and hit us you know uh, at any time soon so uh, dr ahmed what what do you feel are uh, some of the most important uh, you know uh, issues uh, to address 
and if there are any uh, areas that you feel are missing in the cooperation framework over to you uh, please unmute uh, dr sultan ahmed Uh, thank you, Barma. Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Uh, I thank Mr. Dr. Mehta for his nice comprehensive uh, presentation uh, to, for straw management in this region. As per question and the action plan given by the Dr. Mehta, in the mechanization points, I recognize that improvement improve access to CA machinery at subsidy rates and promotion in custom hiring is very important things for this region. And next in mechan a mechanization point, large scale demonstration, training and workers, workshop among the stakeholders for awareness development for uh, straw burning, hazards for the uh, health hazards and other uh, respect other aspect uh, to awareness development among the stakeholders and in institu institutional points i recognize that Metha has rightly mentioned they conduct this survey we need baseline survey we we have uh, this this study done on the literacy review i think but if we need primary database information about the total production of straw, total burning of straw in this, respect, in this region, in, in the respective country. So I recognize this uh, baseline survey based on the primary data should be available for everyone, for convincing the policymaker and then uh, researcher, farmers, the, what, what are the uh, consequences of uh, CRM. Next point for institutional carbon credit scheme for farmers using CA and not burning residue. This should be adopted in the institutional um, management. And next is uh, socioeconomic environment. I recognize this method, uh, Dr. Mehta's points that Awareness creation about the negative impact of crop residue burning on human health and environment through media camping and community community programs. This is, is in the among the same as uh, other training and uh, institutional arrangement or uh, training workshop thing like this. And next is establish uh, self help group and encourage unemployed youth to make up the custom hiring of CR machineries as a professional. We can involve youth. We have a large amount of youth. They are getting certificate, but they have no job. They have no work. They are using mobile phones, <laughs> using right. chatting. But we yeah. can use the uh, for a good camping. And last one is another tech, other technique invention. I recognize the promote 2G biomass based ethanol uh, plant in private uh, public private partnership mode. And this may be a solution. And I can add one point, more point be, uh, beyond this uh, listed point that uh, we can adapt the mature or suitable technology that are available in the developed or developing country for use in this region. And I have an experience after a tsunami in Japan around 2012 or 13, all the trees and houses are destroyed. They use one close burner for burning all these debris, collecting. I have a I had a chance to enjoy that things physical. We yes, can, we can yes. use this technology of how they are managing this. Oh, they burn all the broken houses, trees in a close burner, in a big burner. We can, right. we can uh, convince them. We can take this technology from Japan. We can, we can uh, enjoy that. What Thank is you. Yes.
and this this is the uh, my last question uh, this and uh, in you. bangladesh i think uh, dr ahmed maybe i might have, i might need to ask you to conclude so that because we'll come back to you for a, for a subsequent question just so that we can keep yes, uh, yes. adequate time yes yes hello um, yes so dr ahmed i think we've taken note of these points um, and perhaps we will come back to you for a subsequent question uh, yes. late, later in the panel discussion. Yes. But but thank you, thank you. I think the, the need for data clearly, uh, I think being, being emphasized again, you know, many uh, very important points being made. Uh, let me then just, uh, you know, also bring in uh, Mr. Juliana Arbatengo. Uh, I think you have significant experience in the topic of open burning in Latin America. And, uh, you know, it will be good to hear from uh, your experience of, of the region as well. So uh, please, uh, please share your reflections on, on this question as well. Okay. Thank you for, for the invitation and for the opportunity to, to say a bit more about what uh, ICCI is doing in Latin America, especially in Peru and, and Ecuador related to open burning. One thing that uh, I can mention about the, the most important issues that might be uh, important to, to address uh, in, in your future uh, in your future activities uh, is how you deal with the, the follow-up of the of the project, the sustainability in the long term of all these things. Because I think that we all agree in, in which agricultural practices, which machinery and whatever we should use, but we should also focus on the sustainability on the long term. We should focus on the outreach and how to do a correct follow-up of the, the farmers. Uh, they, they are everyday activities so they do not lose their uh, their objective their goal and they do not return to burning uh, because for them obviously it's a cultural change it's a paradigm change and it needs time and it needs uh, training uh, it's a very complex issue and we need to address it, as you, many of the speakers have mentioned this today, uh, in very different ways, not only uh, taking into account the agronomical issues, but also the, the economical and social aspects of open burning. And in addition, uh, another thing that might be useful and that has been very useful for us in, in Latin America uh, is to map fires. Uh, satellite images uh, can really give us uh, the exact point uh, uh, and give us a lot of information on what is being burned and when it is being burned. Uh, so you can build uh, fire maps uh, for, for example, or every month uh, to see how many fire spots do you can find in, in each country. Uh, and then you can also make uh, fire density maps to see where you can find uh, the biggest uh, the biggest fires so as to address uh, specifically those fires because sometimes they they are related to a specific crop or to a specific situation uh, on a specific year but if you just take a look at the maps at the maps uh, for for different uh, let's say for a series of of years uh, you will see a lot of information there too. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Juliana. Um, so uh, uh, I, I see Dr. Rajpir, you have your hand up, but uh, could we move on to the next question and then I could invite you to, to comment on that one? Would that be, uh, sorry, you're muted, uh, Dr. Rajpir. Yeah, okay, thank you. Actually, two, three points I wanted to add it, uh, then I have to move for another meeting. I'm um, okay. really sorry. First is public participation. Dr. Mehta has rightly, you know, mentioned everything, but I think uh, there is a need to, you know, take into all the uh, stakeholders in the loop and, uh, you know, including uh, civil societies, NGOs, educa educational and social institutions. And then one very important point which we have in India and very good such a story has emerged is the developing learning site at farmers field. Uh, as you know, Agriculture Science Center, popularly known as Krishi Vigyan Kendra, we have developed the whole farm into conservation farm. I mean, using the machines and then demonstrating that to the farmers. Similarly, capacity development is very, very important because this is a knowledge intensive, machine intensive. So the solutions are with the, us, <clears throat> machines are available, that we, but we have to 
you know highlight those things and uh, capacity development of farmers has to be done uh, in a better way and then uh, you know sharing of the success stories among all the partners players social benefits and then uh, ict use very very important the the small uh, uh, the change can happen with very small time so this i think this is a very very important part and then strong partnership you know strong alignment uh, with this uh, i am really very thankful to giving me time let's move towards mission zero burning in south asia also thank you please excuse me i have to leave now thank you thank you thank you so much dr rajpeer and, and thank you for for contributing these these uh, you know very important points uh, you know uh, so we'll we'll certainly uh, you know take them into account as you know as 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 we chart the way forward um so uh, let me uh, with that come to the the third question uh, and uh, uh, you know i'll uh, i'll i'll put this question uh, uh, to uh, uh, to to uh, you know dr uh, uh, sultan ahmed and to ms uh, yulia uh, yuliana albertengo uh, so the question is uh, you know we've, we've we've discussed about the action plan you know we've discussed about the common uh, framework for uh, sub regional cooperation uh, and you know what are some of the missing elements perhaps but uh, what do you foresee as the you know key risks or the challenges uh, in the play implementation of uh, either the action plan or the uh, common framework so what do you foresee as the you know uh, bumps on the road as we uh, move move ahead so let me first put that to uh, dr uh, sultan ahmed uh, you know what do you see as some of the key challenges in this uh, endeavor uh, thank you again good afternoon i have two points only the harm the um, metha rightly mentioned that harmonization harmonization of testing for crm in this uh, region as well as uh, in respective country is very difficult and uh, this and another is expo exploration policy for adoption of crm machine in this region and in this country i think the adoption in ba in case of bangladesh the uh, strobani is not so much uh, crucial only the only the 0.3% is burning so the farmers researchers policy maker are not aware these things so the, we cannot adapt these things easily yeah so we should need these things uh, uh, thinking before taking any action and we can take uh, some international program to awareness development in this region about the future action plan for future we can future thank you very much thank you thank you uh, dr ahmed uh, you know and com completely agree i mean testing uh, standards uh, you know are are vital uh, you know if we don't have efficient machinery you know it is going to contribute to to uh, inefficient straw management uh, to put it straight uh, let me then also just pose this question uh, to uh, ms yuliana albertengo uh, you know with, with your experience what do you see as some of the risks and challenges uh, in this endeavor of uh, sub regional cooperation thank you i think that uh, some points i have already mentioned the sustainability in the long term is one of the, the most common issues for for the long term and also uh, i think that one vital point for for farmers is that as i also uh, i uh, always mention farmers need uh, to see to believe so uh, field trials and uh, field days are are vital uh, so they can experience uh, on hand and see uh, by their own uh, for example, conservation agriculture or, or see the, the machinery. Uh, adaptation of that machinery is also vital because uh, there are a lot of different machines that really work uh, on, on the places that they have been built. But sometimes when you move that machinery to other uh, local situation, uh, it needs some adaptation. So, um, it might be a very slight adaptation or 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 a major let's say concern uh, but it's another issue to take into into account thank you thank you very much uh, no it's, it's it's great to uh, i think learn from from the, the experience in in another region uh, okay with that uh, let's uh, move on to the the last uh, question of the panel discussion and something that's very close to escap and and to csam 
uh, and I'll put this question to to Dr. Khan from Pakistan, and then also bring in uh, Professor Alam and and uh, Dr. Sandra Corsi. Um, what do you think is the role of a regional uh, United Nations entity like uh, the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific with the with the regional mandate, or you know even for uh, a specialized center uh, of SCAP like uh, CSAM, the Center for Sustainable Agriculture Mechanization? So what do you see uh, as our role in this cooperation? I mean we've heard bits and pieces of it, uh, you know, uh, like you know expansion of some ongoing programs and so on. But we'd really like to hear from you on your reflections on 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 this aspect. So first, let me bring uh, bring bring forth uh, Dr. Khan uh, to share your thoughts on this uh, question, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think this is uh, all the last question, but it's a very very important question. To, as I see it. Uh, I think uh, first uh, we are, we equally acknowledge is that uh, uh, an excellent report has been generated uh, with the uh, uh, with with CSAM and uh, SCAP. Uh, uh, you see the management; they really bring uh, experts from the region, selected uh, uh, highly technical experts, resource person and they provided evidences from their respective countries and all has been compiled by CR Mehta very, very nicely. And it, it is uh, in this form, this report is uh, really a regional public good as well as international public good. So we, I congratulate the whole team for developing a very empirical evidences and reporting very nicely and then uh, then I think uh, uh, synthesizing uh, issues and then prospects, uh, ex situ management and in situ management. Uh, and then very nicely, uh, uh, one can see that in India, what type of in situ management uh, technologies are being used, what is in, in Pakistan and other countries. And when ex situ, uh, particularly composting and other, uh, uh, you see this uh, biochar, Although it was not mentioned that much uh, in, in, in deliberation so far, but when I read that, I found there's a lot of potential. That need a strategic kind of investment rather than, uh, because it, it, it is a very demanding, but it will provide a sustainable long lasting solution as well. And it had multiple uses uh, as well as for the agricultural uses for sustainable production in the region as well. So I think uh, the job is not finished for SCAP and uh, for uh, CSAM. So they have to really look forward after producing this report and whatever certain uh, gaps or maybe areas uh, uh, already identified by, by, by in, in different questions, by different experts that can be taken up. Another is to develop a very organized, comprehensive program and then sharing that uh, with the national government at, uh, and then uh, finding support from, the, from, the, from, from different uh, Donors from different uh, sub, support system mechanisms. Possibly that would be that we will expect that that will be the next step. And then, like Rice Fields Consortium, I was part, and my, many of my friends they were part of long, uh, very successful program uh, implemented under Rice Fields Consortium, where this whole region benefited. It has been quoted that collaboration has been quoted uh, in the world as a success story. So I think on this uh, residue management and this emerging issue. And it will, uh, this type of uh, this uh, conservation agriculture uh, and managing residues and uh, uh, reducing emissions and all that will help poor farmers. It will increase productivity, profitability, in, uh, reduce cost of production. It has a huge potential for, uh, for productivity as well as for poverty alleviation, for uh, resource use efficiency and everything. So it needs a lot of attention. So we hope that and we expect that uh, uh, that these forums will be will continuously working, uh, then uh, uh, presenting this case to the national government and uh, 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 developing consensus with the national government, and then uh, uh, then programming nicely, uh, and then bringing all this uh, international public good together, technology, technical know, uh, success stories, and then everybody, the whole region will benefit, the whole world will benefit because it's a mission issue of emission health and all these problems. Thank you, thank, thank you. Uh, and, and I mean, I completely agree. I mean, this, the, the work, if anything, is just starting it. It's not, it's not uh, by any means uh, an ending. Um, 
So, and, and clearly, I think you pointed out the need for continued support for, you know, analytical uh, work and, you know, for advocacy, you know, particularly to policymakers. So that's, that's very, very well recognized. Uh, let me now bring in uh, uh, Professor Javed Alam. Uh, to perhaps share your reflection very briefly. I know we were actually at the end of our meeting time, but I hope it it will be okay to take just another ten minutes, uh, you know, to uh, carry over this very interesting conversation that's that's ongoing. So we'll try to be quick. So Professor Alan, uh, if you could share your thank you, thank you, thank you. I will take very little time. I hope uh, UN ISAP or CISAM uh, is already uh, playing a vital role in establishing a regional cooperation experience, sharing, organizing study tours to control the crop residue burning at its management in this region. Uh, and uh, uh, there are country specific plans uh, in some countries and being developed. Uh, I see UNISAP uh, or CISAM can help to develop regional policies to address these issue, issues because individual, individually it cannot be solved. So regional policies government at government level, uh, it should be endorsed. Uh, also, uh, UN, ISAP, CSAM can play a vital role for discussion of common problems, providing uh, such kind of uh, platforms in its uh, possible solutions. And uh, also uh, can help in conduction of surveys of status of different uh, countries and uh, uh, the level of burning issues exactly and uh, also can help in uh, support machinery and technology sharings uh, as UN ISAP already uh, started the pilot projects uh, to demonstrate the in-situ and ex-situ management of crop, uh, crop residue in different countries, including Nepal. So uh, these are the things and uh, areas uh, where ISAP is already uh, playing and uh, can continue uh, with some additions. Thank you. Thank you, Ansman. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Alam. So I think the role of, of policy advisory support from our side also added to the list. So with that, let me pass on the floor to Dr. Uh, Sandra Corsi. I think you'll have the last word uh, among, amongst the panelists. Uh, so uh, over to you for any reflections on uh, SCAP and CSAM's uh, contributions in future. Thank you, Ansman. Can you hear me OK? Yes, yes. Yes. So this is a very important question. Um, and I would like to thank you for, for inviting us to, to discuss this. Uh, as we know, straw burning is a problem compounded with economic, health, and food security uh, externalities. And it is very important that the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific and its Center for Sustainable Agriculture Mechanization are taking this up and are giving it the relevance and visibility it uh, deserves. Uh, moving forward, it is important that SCAP CISAM continue to do so and facilitate cooperation among countries on crop residue management. And I want to stress how important it is to use an inclusive approach and establish a network of agencies and organizations that can provide the policy and technical support countries uh, need. Um, this network would need to be broader, I would say, than the agricultural sector because solutions to straw burning can be found off farm and coordination among sectors is fundamental. Um, more resilient and efficient cropping systems are at the core of FAO's mandate. So FAO is ready to collaborate with ESCAP and CISAM on crop residue management. In fact, it would be logical for both ESCAP, CISAM and FAO through RAT Regional Office to ally in promoting sustainable crop residue management for the benefits that Dr. Meta and the panelists uh, illustrated uh, so well. So in the, the perspective of a collaboration, FAO could directly liaise with uh, the local authorities in the relevant ministries, thank, thanks to its uh, strong presence in almost all member countries uh, through its uh, representations. And it could also do it uh, um, on behalf or together uh, with uh, ESCAP CISAM, which would really build up a true and uh, action-oriented partnership. Um, I also want to stress that since the origin of the problem is in the agriculture sector, 
Also, its solution needs to be rooted in uh, the agriculture sector so that it can benefit the farmers, the most vulnerable ones. And so this means that for on-farm solutions, uh, mechanization is certainly uh, a game changer. And even when the solution is off farm, we should not forget that straw in the right amount and with proper management is a resource for the farmers. Um, and there are technologies, as it was mentioned by the panelists, the conservation agriculture, for example, that allow to produce in a smarter way. So in both on-farm and off-farm solutions, uh, access to the right equipment is pivotal and knowledge of good management practices uh, based on direct seeding and mulching is essential. So in conclusion, we need to co-formulate recommendations for a sub-regional roadmap for crop residue management, and FAO is ready to collaborate with ESCAP season. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you very much. And I, actually, it's a very timely comment because you know just two days ago, we did partner with the FAO regional office in Asia Pacific for a workshop on conservation agriculture, and perhaps you know some in the audience did uh, did attend that event as well. So we've already begun to put this into action, and you know, great to hear that reflection from your side. Um, so I think that brings us really uh, to the the end of the of the questions and and answers. Uh, you know, big thanks to all the panelists. Uh, you know, we are very short of time. Um, you know, um, but so maybe I'll just pick on one comment that had, you know, come, uh, you know, repeatedly uh, in, in, in the chat. And, uh, you know, that was about the, the, the significance, you know, the, the economic aspect. I think it, it was emphasized that, uh, you know, unless, uh, you know, we make uh, straw burning, uh, you know, uh, uh, economically, uh, you know, unviable or, you know, rather to, to promote the uh, economic incentive for avoiding straw burning. Uh, you know that really is the key, and that brings you know on on board uh, the the role of the private sector uh, uh, as well. I don't know if any of the panelists would just like to reflect on that. Uh, you know, from a smallholder perspective, very briefly in in a minute. I don't know if any of you would like to uh, react to that uh, one uh, one question. Uh, I don't know, Pro Professor Alam. I know from Nepal, there's a small smallholder uh, angle. Would you like to just very briefly reply to the 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 need for incentivizing or rather disincentivizing uh, straw burning for smallholder farmers? Uh, yes, I think uh, uh, we need to uh, see first uh, that uh, the, what is the percentage of uh, farmers are uh, doing this. And uh, 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 seeing that, then uh, we can think about the incentives also. This is also a very good idea to uh, give some intensive for not burning uh, as the uh, it has it is started but the number is small then we can think about the controlling this thing also thank you okay thank you thank you uh, i think that we're just completely uh, uh, out of time so you know just before i i, I hand over back to our, our mc I think it's a, it's not a, a, a humanly possible task, I guess, to to summarize all all the good points that have been made, uh, you know, uh, across the four questions. But I think some some areas have really been uh, repeated on many times over. You know, one is really the uh, the the importance, like I said, of uh, you know making sure that there's there's economic incentive for farmers to to avoid burning. Uh, secondly, the aspect of uh, uh, you know of, of data. Uh, and and you know conducting adequate analysis and and studies uh, has been repeatedly emphasized. I think that really serves the the, the as, as the foundation for uh, you know effective uh, designing effective and uh, uh, you know long term uh, in interventions. There's also been uh, you know emphasis placed on the need for adequate knowledge sharing, capacity building, not just at the uh, institutional level but at the level of the farmers. Uh, you know, and there's also been uh, you know mention of the aspects of of sustainability. Uh, and uh, you know, making sure that that policy development is is well aligned, uh, you know, across the board. There's a mention of of having a, perhaps a dedicated uh, a policy uh, or a, or a strategic strategic framework for uh, for straw burning rather than just for agriculture mechanization as a whole, or or even you know for the agriculture sector as a whole. So uh, again, I'll I'll not uh, further attempt to summarize. I think we we've taken notes and and you know we'll we'll reflect this in the in the further work on on the studies. Uh, and I'll stop here. Just a very big thanks to all all the panelists uh, and and to Dr. Mehta. 
uh, for your presentation and for enlightening the views. I think we've had an excellent round of discussion and uh, I'm sure this will lead to fruitful outcomes uh, going forward. With that, I'll hand back to uh, Leela. Uh, over to you, please. Thank you so much, Anshuman, and thank all the panelists as well as Dr. Mehta for the wonderful session. We are almost at the end of the meeting, but not completely there. Uh, if you guys look at the chat box, you can see the evaluation link. Uh, I would appreciate it if you can click on it and share your feedback with us just so that we know how we've done and how we can do better. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand the floor to Dr. Uh, Rajan Ratna, the Deputy Head of uh, SCAPS of Regional Office South South uh, West Asia to uh, give us the closing remarks for this session. Dr. Rajan. Thank you, Leila. Um, uh, let me first of all uh, thank uh, uh, all the country presenters from uh, Bangladesh, Nepal, India, and Pakistan, uh, and at the same time, Dr. Mehta for taking uh, another presentation to give this regional perspective, uh, uh, looking into what kind of subregional looking at. Uh, also, uh, all the panel uh, and the comments which have come in the chat box, uh, some of the observations are correct and, and rightful and I, I, I think the, the team will take note of uh, uh, all these comments. Uh, of course, we are indeed grateful for all the panel discussions and sharing their views and some comments which came on, on these papers, uh, which uh, basically the, the intention is to finalize, publish and uh, uh, may be then go for the second stage of uh, uh, policy advisory and advocacy uh, work. Uh, this is a challenge uh, for many of the countries and it's heartening to note that we have, uh, though the paper is for a uh, few countries in South Asia, but the people who attended online are beyond South Asia. So which means that this topic has a lot of uh, relevance perhaps to other countries as well. And uh, one of the uh, good things of these webinars are we can we can learn from each other some of the good practices as well as sharing and bringing some values from other countries beyond these subregion and uh, perhaps exploring those possibilities of putting into care. Uh, at the same time, uh, I would also like to thank uh, our head and a director. Uh, Tanaka, uh, as well as uh, Yu Tong Lee, head from CSAM, uh, for their uh, very encouraging, welcoming, and opening remarks. Uh, it is under their leadership that we were able to, to complete this uh, whole exercise, uh, which has been going on since long. And at the same time, uh, thank you. Of course, it's not word of time, but thank you, Anshuman. Takashi and Leela for doing an excellent work. I know I've been uh, also associated with this since long and uh, how uh, uh, we have gone through the papers, the peer review, looking at it, uh, discussing among ourselves as to what we, we, uh, we want out of it. Um, of course, it's uh, very encouraging, but I, I still know that we are still a lot to cover. There is a recognition by the government, there is a recognition by everybody. Still, this is a challenge, still this is a problem. And this is what we have been debating even yesterday in our office strategic team, that this is an issue which is very important. The government recognizes it, they come out with punishment, they come out with penalty, they come out with subsidy. Uh, still, this is a problem. So, uh, oh, oh, what is that we need to do? Do we really need to look into policy advocacy, do we really need to look into coming out with these kind of papers, uh, all the papers are excellent and all these uh, uh, paper presenters are chief chiefs of their countries, still things are not happening, that there is still something which is lagging behind and that gap uh, perhaps CSAM and SCAP will need to fill, I think this workshop will give us that idea to zero down on, on those specific gaps and narrow down going beyond the studies and, and fulfilling. Of course, we also have uh, certain limitations. We cannot go to individual farmers because a lot of informal sector and the farmers are millions and millions in these four countries. And we cannot approach all of them, but perhaps we can be 
partnering with some of the local uh, uh, agencies, state government, that is one way. But thanks that we have such good partners, thanks to CSAM, um, our colleagues. So, uh, and, and I would also like to acknowledge and thank some of our interns, IT team who have been working day in, day out for, for this. Uh, so that is all I could because uh, I know we'll take note and we'll circulate a draft proceeding to, to all those panelists and, and the paper presenters and we'll see how best we can carry it forward. Thank you very much. Thank you again, everybody. Doctor uh, did the thank you, but I want to also say thank you for people behind the scene uh, who helped with uh, handling the uh, work so well and uh, Anshuman and Takashi uh, for what they did uh, throughout the process. Uh, and thank you all for being here with us uh, throughout this meeting, especially the extra 50 minutes. Uh, and I hope that it was productive for everybody. It was definitely a good, uh, I think, uh, harvest for us uh, from uh, the comments that we heard. Uh, I hope you all have a great day and goodbye to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Again, please fill out the evaluation. Uh, we would appreciate it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.